Well, hello and welcome to the Dr. G Show, episode 162. Episode 3, for me. Episode, you've been on other episodes. Oh, that's true. I don't remember what episode I'm on. So, as you guys know, I'm Dr. G. I practice functional uh, lifestyle medicine here in Wichita and see patients all over the world, just helping people reverse uh, acute and chronic things. Um, and then this is, uh, we should call you Nurse Sherry. Can you be Nurse Sherry? I'm Sherry no. Clark. Uh, I am an RN. I am a health coach and lifestyle coach and practice in Wichita and sometimes with Dr. B G here. So we yep. do a lot the same thing and we're very compatible with our philosophies. So. Not competitor, compatible. compatible. Yeah. Hey, there's John Pick. I haven't seen him forever. Hey, John. Can you take some boudoir you. pictures of me? Mm -hmm. No. No, like uh, from Seinfeld. And we're talking about MSG tonight. Oh, you're going to keep us on track. I'm going to try. Okay, so last two weeks we talked about gluten. Those two episodes are great. Lots of good research, lots of like uh, kind of in-depth knowledge about that stuff and practicality. Uh, and, you know, hopefully we, we have some good breadth and depth on those topics. And then uh, today we want to talk about MSG or monosodium glutamate, which is a horrible, horrible nightmare in, uh, created by the Japanese in response to our bombing. That's not right? No. Oh. Well, because we bombed them in 1945 and it was created <laughs> in 1908. So. It no. was pre. World War One. Pre. Killing us. So. Uh, what the hell is MSG? Do you want to run with that? Or do you want me to run? Monosodium glutamate. glutamate. Yeah. It has about 500, and, I don't know, 50 names at least. It's got lots of names. Holy crap, yes. Yes. Yeah, and I'll, 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 I'll try to post some of those for you guys too. Uh, and, you know, welcome as you guys come on. If you have questions uh, throughout it, please post them. Sometimes I can read it, sometimes I can't. Um, but uh, feel free to post questions as we go through this. And also, if you watch this offline, post those questions too. So with MSG, it's kind of interesting. I, I love doing the shows because you gotta you get a chance to kind of really research and go in depth. So my knowledge base a lot of times is just every patient that's ever asked a question in the last 17 years, I have to look it up and figure it out. Hey, there's Julie Brayfield. Hey, Julie! Um, and so I, that's how I want to learn a lot of stuff. But then when you do a show, uh, then you uh, kind of have to really dig deep down and, and like really kind of get a good breadth and depth of information. And there's Michelle. Um, how you doing? Thank you for joining. And so I, I like going from the beginning. So a hundred years ago. I just want to say before you even start, oh. I, when I started researching this, mm -hmm. I was so amazed that at the very beginning, when I'm just starting out, I look and all the articles say basically the same thing. They're, they're supposed to be research, reports on research articles. They're from a medical, you know, Mayo Clinic and who knows where. And they all say the same thing. Oh, don't you worry now. The sensitivity that some people say they have to MSG, that's just not even a thing. Yeah. Well, that's every, that's I have no thing. idea anybody even said that because it's so obvious to me that it is a thing. It's right. totally a thing. And it's not, people are not making things up. Um, some people are more sensitive than others, but we'll talk about that. So, yeah, it's MSG has been around a really long time. Pregunta. See? Okay. How many of you guys have noticed MSG sensitivity? So you know it's kind of funny because we'll talk a little, we'll talk in way more detail about this stuff, but I know, like from the start, if I eat MSG, I will get severe brain fog, and I will also get bloating. If I ever look bloated, it's not because I'm chubby. It's probably MSG. Somebody got me an MSG. Right? I was at a party. I didn't get it, but someone was passing around MSG, and then maybe I took a little bit of MSG. No, that's not how that works. So, with me, it's very, very uh, uh, strong for bloating and brain fog. What about what for about me? You? I, the only thing I notice <laughs> is that I just go, I just fall asleep. Oh. I am so sleepy. No amount of caffeine, and I'm very sensitive to caffeine. No amount of caffeine will touch it. So it's like 
not the same pathway or something that the caffeine uh, helps or makes me alert yeah. sometimes. Uh, but my, my girlfriend, we would go out to eat together and we'd always tell them, no MSG, no MSG. And about half the time they would forget. Mm. And she would have severe heart arrhythmias. And I would go to sleep. And it was, we all, so I'd call her. <laughs> you guys were quite a pair. I know. Once. Well, so we'd go home and I'd say, hey, how are you doing? I'm yeah. like so sleepy. I think I'm going to take a nap. And she's like, oh, yeah, the arrhythmia. And it was always, you know, we should have been in a study because, you know, it wasn't, there was no doubt. I went to a Korean restaurant uh, and they had like, I don't know, seven different uh, kimchi dishes. And I was like, I know they have MSG in them. And oh my gosh, the next day I was like, did I get roofied? Like I had so much brain fog, like I felt so weird the rest of the day. Like I literally thought that that girl drugged me. Well, she might have. some of the research <laughs> the indicates that it only lasts for a couple of hours, but I don't find that to be true in my mm -hmm. case, and I don't think you find that to be yeah. true either. I think it's more dose dependent, you know. So yeah, so part of the controversy that we're gonna go through with this uh, is, you know, you'll read stuff where it's just like that traditional like, no, it's super safe. And then you're gonna read other stuff that's like, it's killing you. And then the question is like, what's the reality? So on the Dr. G show, what we like to do is cut through the BS, tell you stuff the real deal, right? Deb says she feels high. Oh. Not now, but when she takes the <laughs> She's like, I'm watching the show, I feel really good. Yeah. Uh, hangover what about feeling. Stephanie? Yes. Hangover feeling. Yeah. So that's that, like that feeling of being roofied, you know? Like I, like, I actually took, uh, ate some chips once that I thought was gluten free. Is that Tuesday morning? And they had. Uh, it was I like. I think you showed me those chips. Yeah, it was like all wonderful stuff on the front, so I didn't read the back, and it was packed with MSG, and I ate that whole damn bag of chips. And my stomach bloated so hard. I was like, I gotta go home. Something's wrong. And then it took me a week before my brain. I was here brain... that day. I believe I, I coached yeah. for you that hour because you were so brain foggy. Oh my god, yeah. it felt so weird. I was talking to patients, and the whole time I was just like, Am I saying the right stuff? Yeah. Like I was having a hard trip for a week, a week to get my brain back from all that MSG. It was crazy. And as we'll talk about later, it actually kills your brain cells. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what happens to me. I just. Yeah. So Deborah says, it, uh, is it blurs? Causes my yeah. mom to bloat yeah. to the point that she hurts. So Whoa, when mostly. you eat it, your mom bloats? That's <laughs> crazy. Hmm. So background here, what the hell is MSG? Like, well, what is it? Why is it, right? Now, just like most things, MSG came from somewhere natural. It's not the same thing anymore. Uh, but 100 years ago, this Japanese chemist was trying to figure out why this certain Japanese soup tasted so amazing. Like it was just a flavor that nobody could replicate. And so he pulled it apart and figured out that it was this chemical called MSG or glutamate or glutamic acid. And so the Japanese chemist was Kikunane. Kikune Ikeda. Ike, you do that so much, so much better than me. As Texas educated. So. I say, Konnichiwa, Hajimamashite, Iridakimas. He was in Japan. I know. Oh. I still can't. Mm. So it was derived from seaweed, basically, right? So again, tiny little mouths in seaweed, never a problem. Tastes amazing, makes your brain smarter. And it's because it's attached to other, yeah. Other, we'll talk, yeah. It's in protein, yeah. And the funny thing is, um, he actually figured out we had a whole new taste bud. So, when I went to school back in 1832, there was only four tastes. Do you know what those are? Yes. You guys know what those are? Sweet, mm -hmm. salty, bitter. And, and sassy. No. Wait, wait, sweet, sour, salty, and bitter. Okay. And then there was a fifth one called umami, or yomami, right? No, no, umami. Umami? Which means it tastes good, Yo, I think. Oh, so it, yeah, I, I, it means uh, the taste of life or something. Where is it? It's on Essence there. of taste. Essence of taste. So he figured this out. So this was pretty freaking amazing. 
So basically now you can take bland, boring, crappy food and make it taste even better by adding this seaweed extract. So it has that unique flavor that we, we didn't even know we had until, until this. But these days, MSG is actually now derived from fermenting starches and sugar beets, which is genetically modified. The starch is probably corn starch, which is genetically modified. And sugar cane, which is genetically modified. Where is it? No, just kidding. <laughs> that was a trick. No. Uh, but cane sugar and then molasses, which is the derivative from, or the stuff left over from extracting um, table sugar. But that also, when we talk about the names, you'll see that when it says fermented blah, 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 in ingredients, you're like, what the hell is that? Often that just means MSG. So. Yeah, anything fermented or hydrolyzed. We'll talk about it more later. Hey, Gina. Gina, do you have problems with MSG? you'd like to talk about with all of this? <laughs> okay, we got something here. What's it say? All right. So oh, Stephanie... Because it was really salted beef. It did, didn't just taste what? like salt. So what did she say? She said she ate salted beef from Newfoundland. I think that's what that says. Never trust the Newfoundlanders. And never got that feeling. What's mm. the difference? Because it was just salted beef. Yeah, trust the Newfoundlanders. Well, they didn't add MSG right. to as they say the salted beef. In, as they say in Newfoundland, we don't add the MSG to our sausage. <laughs> Is that right? The Vikings did come there, but I don't think they talk like that there. Mm -mm. <laughs> as I learned that from Woody Woodpecker. <laughs> so, he then took that... Uh, a, that MSG, but he did a little thing a little different, right? Kind of like what we do when we have to patent stuff. You add a little extra on there, something that never existed. So what he did was he created a crystallized version that was uh, five carbons, nine hydrogens, nitrogen, and four oxygens called, so glutamic acid, kind of like how ascorbic acid is not really vitamin C, but it can be called vitamin C and patent is that. And if you remove one of those hydrogens from that formula, then you get glut uh, glutamate. So glutamate, glutamic acid, and MSG are all fairly interchangeable names when it comes to ingredients. Now again, later when we talk about this, uh, it's different based on those things in actual food versus extracts of those added to food. That's, that's the, the key point with all this. So glutamate, uh, that's extracted. Well, even glutamate by itself. Okay, well, let's talk about when it's not extracted, when it's not free glutamate. Right. Well, that's later. It's later? It's All later. Right. It's later. It's later. So with glutamate, so you guys have probably heard of glutamate. Sherry, Sherry, uh, wh where do you hear glutamate as a treatment? Uh, glutamate is often encouraged as a treatment to uh, fix leaky gut. Which, yeah. since Patrick can talk. <laughs> no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Um, it's all fine. No, but, uh, so like if you have hyperpermeability of the small intestine, which can lead to food sensitivities, we talk a lot about food sensitivities here. Um, one treatment that many functional physicians encourage is to take glutamate because it helps heal the gut lining. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have leaky gut, you probably have leaky brain. And so the blood brain barrier is more permeable than is optimal. And Should you so, then take glutamate for leaky brain? No, no, it doesn't work for leaky brain, but it does mm. cross that blood brain barrier. And, and actually, it can be used as a diagnostic to determine if you have a blood brain barrier problem. problem, problem. Uh, if you ha notice symptoms after taking glutamate, you do have permeability of the blood brain yeah. barrier too. So um, anyway, long story short, we question the wisdom of taking glutamate for yeah. fixing the gut. I, just for the record, I've always been against it because I equate it the same as MSG, but oh my God, that's why they don't like me going to seminars because I'm always disagreeing with everybody, but based on science. <laughs> So, right, so to, to heal the, the gut, we would say instead to eat real food, 
you know, all the stuff we say, you know, don't eat trash, eat real food. And yeah. So yeah. glutamate's, you know, really important. So a lot of times you'll read that well, glutamate is a vital nutrient in the body. Yeah, because it's part of the, it's part of pro, complete protein. Yeah. It's a, and it, yeah. Yeah, and it, it makes things like GABA. Um, is that right? That doesn't sound right. Never mind, that's not true. Um, but glutamate's used in the brain to actually uh, regulate a bunch of functions. And so it's one of the most excitatory neurotoxins in the brain. So when you talk about like mental alertness, uh, not having brain fog, having great memory, uh, a sustainable memory, uh, you know, glutamate's a huge part of that. So then people, we kind of extrapolate that and say, well, what if we can create some synthetic stuff and then give it to you? Would that be the same? But it's not the same. It's not the same. And because it's much more available and it's it's at a much higher concentration right and so it just basically just say it. you you want to say it say it so explain the difference so so you have free glutamic acid that's a derivative that you can add to stuff right and then you have it naturally occurring but what's the difference then like really what's the absorption difference or like what makes that different well for the glutamic acid to be free it has to be I don't I guess I would disengaged from the rest of the yeah. amino acid sequence in that protein and so it's it's a, a much slower absorption mm -hmm. yeah. through digestion and and through that breaking off process and yeah. everything so you're not going to get that hit well, yeah like yeah. it's like the difference between did you say that the difference between like caffeine in tea yes. and caffeine in energy drinks because right. it that is also a different kind of caffeine and it's it's processed in a different way to be very impactful yeah not not like i mean if you got problems with caffeine and tea and coffee just imagine you know the synthetic one it's it's created well, in order to do that and so is msg honestly yeah and that's the thing, you know, if you say, well, uh, you know, energy drinks only have 85 milligrams. Well, so does yerba mate. But yerba mate doesn't put 22,000 young Americans in the ER every year for cardiac conditions and kill children every year. So what the hell's the difference between yerba mate caffeine or Red Bull caffeine? Or Monster's 160 milligrams? Coffee's up to 200 per little cup. So how can somebody drink a whole pot of coffee not up and end up in the ER, but if I drink three Red Bulls, which is less, I end up in the emergency room. And so it's exactly what you're saying is that... It's a synthetic concentrated form. Yeah, when it's free, it's instantly absorbed, instantly goes to the blood-brain barrier, instantly goes to cells, instantly causes a, a reaction. But when it has to break down slowly over time, then you have this time constraint with absorption and you get a measured dose that's utilized by the body for positive things. So the glutamate in seaweed or uh, mushrooms, yeah. they're meaty because of that. Um, also some in tomatoes, you know, that's not going to have the same effect as... Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. As is MSG added to your food so it will taste, so one chicken will taste like ten chickens. Yeah. So, you know, everybody searches for that tiny little cube of well maybe you hopefully you don't search anymore but in the Campbell soup the chicken and whatever Campbell soup yes well they put enough MSG in there it tastes like they've got ten times more chicken but can we take ten chickens and make it taste like a hundred chickens of course oh, I see that's perfect then so what's really interesting too is there is a movement so there's a foodie movement if you guys watch Food Network TV uh, which some of us are too busy playing with our cats, be watching TV. Too busy working. Too busy working. Researching. Work and research. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're slaving away for you people, right? You people. Watchers. Our dear watchers. Dear watchers, yeah. So, there's a big food movement of using umami flavor enhancing for food, but from natural sources. And so then there's this big disconnect of like you have these restaurants like you have umami burger, and they use mushroom and, and seaweed to create the umami flavor, which is perfectly fine. So people eat that, no migraines, no bloating, no, 
no uh, uh, reactionary symptoms, no brain swelling. But if they eat an MSG burger, boom, they have these reactions. So same kind of thing is if you get that, um, just know if you see that umami flavor, is it umami from added or is it umami from naturally occurring? And that makes a huge difference between those. Um, so in 1909, just after graduation, uh, that Japanese dude started mass producing this stuff um, and it was called Ejin... Say it. I'm not saying it. <laughs> Ahiomoto. Ahiomoto. You gotta say it like a labor Japanese. Ahiomoto! Like that. So then he started mass producing. So he discovers it. I think he patents it and then he starts mass producing and selling it. It only so, took him a year. That's super fab. And he created a sodium salt. Again, it's not the exact same thing, right? Because you can't patent nature. So it's a sodium salt, which is a salt form of glutamic acid. Uh, so they have extra sodium that's in there, which then also kind of becomes an issue with MSG and sodium content. Um, and then the whole goal was to basically make food delicious. That was planned. So then by the 1930s, um, it started occurring in Japanese cookbooks, right? And I think by the 1960s, it was all in American cookbooks. Cheese, like MSG cheese balls. Oh, you could buy. I did that. I did, did you? that. Yeah, that stuff accent, that is pure oh, MSG. Yes, 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 yes. And you put a yes. whole bottle in a cheese ball. It was did you guys grow up with that? Awful. Who, who, who's I did mom that in college. Megan? I did that in college. I was... I know you're baby then, but that's okay. So... And then during World War II, Americans started really in embracing MSG because they could make these food rations for these people uh, that were gross. Uh, which, by the way, I have I have one I bought at a a store. That's an MS, uh, That's a ration. I don't think there's MSG in this. It's gross. Let me read it. All right. So it is flour, shortening syrup, corn syrup, soy flour, starch flour. A bunch of synthesized vitamins, uh, artificial and then artificial flavors, lemon flavor, and vanilla. This must be dessert. And artificial butter and artificial coloring. So a bunch of uh, petroleum-based stuff. Now this, I don't think had MSG in it. Is there? There's no. Uh... Well, it says artificial flavoring. I don't know. It doesn't oh, look... yeah, it might have that. It might be in that. Well, I don't know. I'd rather have lemon cake, but not that. And this is gross because I bought this uh, from the uh, like our, our old antique store, and she said that, "Oh my gosh, you're lucky." This is from the Coast Guard. Uh, she said, "You're lucky because there was uh, some kid keeps buying these." Oh no! And he's eating them. <laughs> oh no! This kid is like little kids like eating these gross ass things. So. That being okay, said. Okay, wait a minute. We got a question wait, here. Wait, wait. You get an energy drink that says energy from tea. Is that the same thing as Red Bull energy? No. So as long as it's real, like yerba mate is an okay energy drink. You're not going to end up in the ER for that. Um, something like oolong or black. I mean, it has 50 milligrams of uh, caffeine in there, but, you know, big, big like. Uh, What's the difference between glutamate and L glutamate? I used to take L-glutamate for helping with leaky guts. Yeah, that's what I was Same just thing. talking Same about. Yeah, yeah, we discourage that because it does cross the blood-brain barrier. Yeah. So L-glutamate means on the double bond of that molecule, it rotates levo or left. That's where the L comes from. So in nature, things are either rotate D uh, dextrose or L levo. And so you know, L lysine, D ribose, that kind of thing. So um, so yeah, L-glutamate's the same thing with that. And so the, in World War II, they brought that back. And so then they, basically all those uh, um, GIs brought, it, brought this uh, back too. And then it became huge from the 1940s to 1960s. Um, and, you know, the U.S. and other and countries. Now, I mean, it never oh, stopped. Yeah, they banned it, right? And then in the 1960s, maybe, 40s. FDA uh, ignored the research and said it was grass. They said it was generally recognized as safe. It's fine. Don't even worry about it. 1959. It's all good. <gasps> Everything that was considered a food. Damn, 1959. Uh, before that, 
they grandfathered in and did not oh. re-research it uh, to see if it was actually generally accepted as safe. Yeah. Recognized as safe. And that's like, you know, I don't know if you guys know this, but like Tylenol, if Tylenol, Tylenol was grandfathered in, mm -hmm. and if Tylenol had to go through the same process, it would not be allowed as a drug. Uh, over the counter, it have to be by prescription because it causes fifty two percent of all liver failures in the United States. So, the industry industry then has this competition. You have this food additive that creates more profit for your food, and then you have all these people getting sick from that ingredient. And just like America, what we say is, <laughs> it's just. All in your head. Don't no even worry problem. about it. Don't worry about it's it. It's not real. Every time you eat that food and you end up with a migraine, it's probably, probably genetic. Probably something else it's in probably, the food. Yeah. It's, I actually read that the other day. Mm -hmm. They said it's probably something else in the food. Yeah. We love the all in your head situation, mm -hmm. right? Especially when it happens every single time. Every single time. time. Right. And everybody at your table has the same problem. And it was so pervasive that uh, they actually called it Chinese Chinese restaurant syndrome or wontong syndrome because people suddenly started having all these horrible reactions. And again, not traditional Chinese food, but um, the um, MSG stuff, that, the, the kind that we created for Americans. But even in China, they're using this. Oh, yeah, now. yeah. Because so. we went through Japan, then China, Japan, China, then the U.S., and then... Uh, so, they basically say it's all in your head because glutamate is glutamate is glutamate. But like Sherry was saying, is that if the if the uh, that protein is bound or that amino acid is bound, then it's a complex structure and it, and it absorbs differently, right? The dose is different. So the difference between a drug, a cure, and a poison is dose. the dose. So. That dose changes, just like we see with caffeine, like with Red Bull. And I told you, see? I know. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's, I, yeah. So then we have the health issues, right? So you guys have some health issues that you guys talked about. I know Emily knows all about this. She's a Texan. They're all eating MSG down there. No, no. So... I have severe bloating, I have brain fog, you get pass out, right? Your friend has arrhythmias. So everybody's is a little bit different with this. And there's Newman. Just that. So there are a lot of other symptoms that uh, like what? people have. <laughs> uh, you can have itching basically <gasps> anywhere. Uh, but a lot of people have itching in their mouth where they have eaten it, you know, where it's Right. Yeah, lip, lip, swelling, lip swelling, sores in your mouth. Yeah, or yeah. just very sensitive, you know, like you just hypersensitive or to tongue anything. swells. Yeah. Lysitis. Um, your throat can swell, which is a problem. Boom. Um, bloating, like we said. Bloating. But a big can, bone and MSG bloat. That's, well, that's the only problem. And all that stuff that's going on in your mouth that you can more easily feel is also yeah. going on throughout your <sighs> intestinal tract. And a lot of a lot of your, it's kind of weird because sometimes you really hurt when things go on in your gut, and sometimes not so much because some of those areas have more nerves than others. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. so I can't tell if like I I get a rash if I have a rash in my tummy too in my intestines, yeah. you know. Yeah. But you, but if it's happening in your mouth, it's probably happening throughout. So, uh, but the the bloat could also be, and other pain, is a symptom, and that could be that. Uh, brain fog, like we said, heart palpitations, like we said, but it can progress to seizures and tremors. Yeah. Uh, migraines are a very common yeah. side effect. Um, you can feel like you have pressure in your face or in, in your sinuses. Um, I think I have that sometimes too. Yeah. You can have numbness or tingling. Neuropathies. Yeah. In your toes, your fingers. Yeah. That would be scary. I mean, this could send people to the ER, and then oh, yeah, by like the time they that. wait for four hours to get seen, it's gone, right? So em Emily says, I wish my kids would listen uh, to me about MSG. Uh, you can just stop right there. I wish my kids would listen to me, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? 
They sneak ramen noodles at their friends' houses. Oh, those things are bad. <laughs> on many levels. Ditch those packets. That's the big thing. But, yeah, no, it's uh, a prophet in their own town is unheard. Uh, Emily, anyone that says the same thing. My boys don't listen to me either. No. Um, so, what we got, we've got a whole system here going like arrhythmia, chest pain, burning, mm -hmm. numbness, general weakness. Yeah, that's good. You one. can get hives. Yeah. Rashes. Of course, you can get a stomach ache. Um, asthma. Oh, asthma. That's a whole thing. That's a big If one. you have a, a tendency toward asthma, you have a very heightened 40% of those eating MSG who have a history of asthma will have an attack within 24 hours. 40%? 40% is the research. Yeah. Uh, and atopic dermatitis, which means your doctor yes. will say, uh, yeah, it's probably something you touched. Yeah. So but it doesn't have to be something you touched. It'll be like, uh, oh, it's Crohn's. Or not sorry, it's uh, eczema, psoriasis, contact dermatitis. Like it's just like I don't know, it's something. Itching. But generalized itching. Too. What are you doing to cause it? Everything that's chronic is what are we doing to cause it? It's what we eat, drink, breathe, rub on our skin, and how we stress. Because your physiology is designed to work, your genetics are designed to work. It's only when we screw it up, and so that's where, like, out of all the things, like. We MSG, dairy, it's like those are the worst of the worst. And some people are more sensitive than other people. So like not everybody's gonna get all these <sighs> MSG empath. <laughs> Is that a thing? I bet it's the introverts that get more I don't know, know. You, have I'm an a, extrovert. you have a very hurdy tummy when you I'm eat a, it. I'm a I'm just a little bit extrovert. Just a, a little bit. A little bit. I know. So yeah, so the health issues, you know, it can range from a lot of things, which then becomes very frustrating to your average kind of physician because they, again, that we, you know, medical school, they don't learn anything about food, diet, and vitamins, minerals, any of that kind of stuff, really. And so then it just becomes. And they read uh, the research. It's, it's all, all in your head. head. It's all in your head. Your, your people do not have this yeah. problem. So you have a real physical, actual problem that's chronic, and they're telling you you don't. It's all made up. Which becomes very frustrating. Well, hopefully. Well, I mean, I guess it could be chronic, depending on your diet. That's right. Some people just get well, it occasionally. Oh, well, it's, it's kind of like, yeah, because it's like the... But, um, I mean, you know, if, you're, if ramen noodles are a, a staple at your house, you're going to have a chronic <laughs> MSG poisoning, basically. But when we look at all the foods, if people are eating processed it's foods... It's true. If you eat out all the time, every it's single very meal, difficult to avoid. Every single meal. And I, I'm telling you, the like, I get fries, and it's just like, oh, they have seasoning. I'm like, no seasoning. No seasoning. Nothing. Because why would they put seasoning on it? They want it to taste better. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be MSG. Mm -hmm. uh, every Just about every potato chip that has any flavoring. Yes. I think you'd be hard-pressed to find one that did not have terula yeast or... Autolyzed yeast. Autolyzed yeast. I mean, there's a, we'll talk about this. I hope yeah. you have the list here yeah. somewhere. But there's a zillion different names. This pisses for me off with that. And that, again, even at your best health food store, that's a place where it's a huge pitfall because where they hide it in other names. Yeah. So physiologically, again, that MSG is a neurotoxin, uh, which again... That's a scary word, neurotoxin. It yeah. kills your neurons. It kills, kills your brain cells. Brain cells, yeah. So now it's called a cytotoxin when it's in food. When it's extracted and put in food, it's a neurotoxin, right? Well, it um, makes your neurons just get so excited that they just... Boom, yeah. They just kill themselves. Yeah. Running yeah. around. Think like your kid, like, we're going to go go to the park. And like, ah. <laughs> that's how you're nervous. They, and, they fire uncontrollably. That's yes. the more technical term. And it crosses the blood-brain barrier, but even more importantly, it crosses the... Placental, placental barrier. barrier. So... If you're expecting, your daughter's expecting, mm -mm. anybody you like is expecting, that should be one of the no-no foods. You yeah. really have to watch those labels. Yeah, and because it's... Because it's doing that to the baby, mm -hmm. you know, that it's it's killing brain cells potentially. Yeah. You don't want that. And anything else that could be going on. I don't know. Like, I have, I have like, smart kids, and they're always, like, asking tons of questions. Like, I should give them MSG, and so they just sit there and watch TV all day. They'd watch like uh, Teletubbies and just sit there and like, like that would be great. <laughs> you don't want dumb kids. <laughs> They're easier. <laughs> so, um, 
So yeah, it crosses that blood brain uh, barrier, but also the placental one, which then means again, once it crosses the placenta, then it crosses the baby's blood brain and then uh, barrier and then affects their actual brain. Let's see, Missy, hey Missy. Hey Missy. Um, <laughs> she says she needs to keep all her brain cells. I'm with you there, I need all yes. I can get. So, other names, Yes. it's pretty messed up. So there's basically like three big categories for this because there's the direct names, there's names that are kind of associated with it or that's kind of hidden in there, and then there's other names that are like part of the process of making it that is called that. So our big ones are glutamic acid, glutamate, MSG, monosodium, glutamate. Anything that says glute, pretty much. But you know what, one time I saw, I was reading Pringle cans and it said, uh, dye sodium glutamate. I was like, oh snap. They added another sodium to that. They're trying to mess, mess it up. They're trying to distract people from that name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then anything that says this glutamate. Sodium. Glutamate. Calcium. Glutamate. Perfect. Magnesium. Yeah. And your Don't favorite. Don't consider it a source of magnesium or calcium. It's no, 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 no. No, it's bad. Anything gluta pretty much yeah yeast extract you got to watch yeast too yeast any most anything yeast yeah except just plain yeast. Well, nutritional yeast mm, well no it's probably okay it's one yeah. of those foods high vitamins really good unless you're really sensitive to yeast um, yeah. but no I think MSG it's not um, although I do believe I heard that they are adding MSG to it, it god a, dang I spread that too yeah yeah so Okay, if you're very sensitive, you might want to mix the That's just straight yeast. up bull crap. I feed that to my cat. Do you think her brain cells are dying? Oh, so uh, years ago with my students, um, I said, uh, you know, cats don't have sweet taste. Cats will never eat your sugar. They won't eat sweets. They won't eat candy, right? Mm -hmm. But they have umami receptors. Mm -hmm. And so we did this little experiment in class. Uh, and one of my students gave uh, their cat... Um, what are they called? Uh, Funyuns. Funyuns? I used to live <laughs> when I was a teenager on Funyuns and Dr. Pepper. Oh my gosh. Just think how smart he would have been. Oh, I know, right? If so, he hadn't done that. Um, she gave the Funyuns to her cat, and her cat like loved them. Loved them. And then she said at like 2 o'clock in the morning, the cat was outside going... <laughs> like going insane, like clawing at the window. She just looks like, oh my god, this cat's addicted to this stuff. Yeah, she's probably in withdrawal. And Angela says, hmm. Yes, I take. Oh, she, she's talking to someone else. All right, never mind. And Lindsay says she's enjoying this. So, mm -hmm. on the labels, you'll sometimes see things called yeast food, or uh, autolyzed yeast, autolyzed yeast big one. or terula yeast. Um, <laughs> it, all that is, all that is just another way of saying MSG. Yeah, and even at the health food store, those flavored chips, mm -hmm. you yeah. gotta find the ones that don't. Now, Benitos doesn't. Do you know okay. That? Well, I wasn't sure. Um, or just the plain, you know, the, but anything hydrolyzed. If it says mm. hydrolyzed, yes, <sighs> yes. That's a anything bulk. autolyzed, autolyzed yeast, mm. autolyzed protein. Anything that says protein. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a real big surprise for me too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's that? Vet sin? Yeah, I've never heard of that. That is a soy. How do you know this stuff? I be knowing stuff. Damn, girl. You think you're only smart? B-E-T-S-I-N. I thought that was when you do inappropriate stuff to animals when you're a veterinarian. Okay. It's a vet sin. Vet sin. Is that? I think that's not the same thing. If you cut their fingers off for the claws, that's a vet sin. Oh, uh, yes. Vet it, sin? It truly is. Oh, one thing you may not think about is whey protein. So, protein. But we think, oh, whey protein, that's not too bad. That's what I use to recover from my workout. Well, I shouldn't be doing the whey anyways, but whey protein in your potato chips is not a good thing. Mm -hmm. Anything case, caseinate, yeah. bad thing. Soy protein, bad thing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Textured protein, 
also yeah. a bad thing. And again, oh, and gelatin, gelatin. I know that. Gelatin? I, that's, that's well, it's it's autolyzed right. uh, yeah. beef protein. So that's always the carcass from the animal, right? And they make now, dummy bears. But is it extracted? I mean, if it's just boiled carcass, wouldn't that be food? Gelatin? Well, I don't know. They're doing something in the processing. Mm. We have to do more research now. Mm -hmm. Why did you ask questions that require research? Because it makes us smart. That's right. Yeah, vegan protein with greens is perfect. Aw, uh, Macy. So, the, uh, the funny thing about this, is, uh, and again, you've probably heard this before when we talk about meat is, uh, or protein, the protein myth, is uh, they start out with whey protein, really, honestly, just to sell you waste products from cheese manufacturing, right? So that That's company true. can make more money. But they convince you you're protein deficient. And so now everybody's allergic to whey protein, and have all kinds of weird problems with it. So then they switch to vegan protein, which is freaking peas. <laughs> You're getting buff eating peas. Just eat your freaking food like every other animal on earth that doesn't have to take whey protein or some vegan smoothie powder. Just eat your freaking food. So, or eat a piece of meat with your smoothie. Just put the meat in the smoothie, like a basomatic. You remember that one? No. The Bassomatic uh, from Saturday Night Live, one of the first episodes, he puts the bass in there oh, and sprays uh, it. And he, there's a, a joke smoothie. about that, isn't there? Oh. Oh, it's an episode. It's great. So, yeah, and then, of course, soy sauce is one of the first places I've figured out. But stock, you know, broth and okay, stock. Okay, so, like, and, if you see broth on the label or especially powdered broth, yeah. be suspicious. That doesn't mean it's bad to make your own beef broth. It's perfectly fine. It's just that they aren't making their own. They're doing a chemicalized version of it. And so when they put it on the label, then it says broth or it says whey. I mean, even whey, you know, it's like whey. But they do things to it. They change it. Yeah. And uh, um, let's see, which one other one was it? It's I like when they that? come out of the van, at the, in that white van, panel van in the, the woods. They're totally different. You don't even know what I'm talking about. No, I don't okay. want to know. And of course, if you see that word, Ajinomoto uh, or Ajinomoto. Ajinomoto. Yeah. That is. You got to say it like that. Say it. Ajinomoto. Ajinomoto. Okay. So, <laughs> but there are some other ones. Even maltodextrin, which we know from last time, uh, can also hide gluten. Or Damn. That's in all kinds of supplements, too. And medications. Oh, and guess where they put MSG also? We didn't, I didn't even put it on here. What is the thing that people inject? I'm asking you guys. What is the most commonly injected thing in people's bodies that have MSG in it? A neurotoxic chemical that they inject in babies. You know what it is? Yes. Don't tell them. It's a big secret. Oh, See if they, they might. Out. Out. Someone might assassinate us if we mm -hmm. tell. Them. Okay. Yeah. We don't want to be killed because that's what they'd be doing. Ah, uh, damn it! Emily figured it out. Vaccines. vaccines. Yeah. So a lot of vaccines have neurotoxin. Not, not only just mercury up in that thing, but they have MSG, which is neurotoxic. And why you know do you why? need a flavor? Why? Because somebody be knowing stuff. It helps right. your body to. Oh shit! That's right. Hyperabsorb it. Hyperabsorb it. Damn it. Yep. And there's aborted fetal tissue in them, but that's a different episode. So. MMR. You cannot get MMR without aborted fetal tissue. Yeah. I just heard. I just heard a talk about this just the other day. Yeah. MRC5 and WI38 <sighs> are babies. Sad. Okay, so a few more. Um, There's more ingredients? Yeah. <gasps> okay, yeah. so that carrageen on there. Mm -hmm. So everybody's having problems with carrageen as a thickener for their nut milks. But was it really carrageen, which is from seaweed? Or was it the MSG that's in the carrageen that's Making causing the problem? The, we thought it was for thickening. Maybe mm. it was to make those nut milks a little taste a little better. That's right. So yeah. now they use uh, alginate. Or gel right. and gum. Or gel and gum, yeah, yeah. Yep. So this should be good. Uh, natural flavorings. Of course, natural flavoring could be 
when you squeeze your lemon juice into your whatever. Or yeah. it could be something monster that's created in a lab. So we don't know. It's Holly Maracas. <laughs> I always call her Maracas. <laughs> what? <laughs> Holly. Oh dear. She's H1. Holly Hijaz is H2. Mm. So she's H1. So natural flavorings are, you know, dig deeper if you see something that you're buying that has natural flavorings in it. You might want to check that out. It could be gluten. It could be... Um, genetically modified, it could be MSG. And yeah. often, if it's a savory item, it'll be MSG. Oh my gosh. And I'll tell you what, I love my Crohn's patient, ulcerative colitis, irritable bowel, like it's that easy to fix those patients, right? That easy. And they will be fine and resolved and asymptomatic and then they'll they add some powder that's natural flavors and then it'll come back with a vengeance and they're like, oh my God, I think it's coming back. I'm like, everything that you is chronic is something you're chronically doing. What the hell did you do? What changed? And like the last patient, it was they added MSG to McCormick's taco seasoning and that caused her flare. Another patient, they went to the worst fast food place ever. I don't know about that. Chick-fil-A. It's the worst. No. It's the worst. No. It and is they, a fast food restaurant, freaking, which you should not go to, but it's probably not the worst. It's the worst. <sighs> It's the worst because the whole presupposition. No, that we're it's not healthy. talking about that. We're no, talking no, no, about no. I'm not talking about the religious part, but that it's healthy. It's not healthy. Well, it's not. I don't think they actually claim to be healthy. Right. Well, oh. but people think that they're mm. healthier because they are in some ways. Yeah. Why? Why? Donating. You know, Why? There's, they seem to have a conscience, but mm -hmm. it's a fast food restaurant. Don't go there. So <laughs> their chicken breast, nothing on it, has MSG in it. MSG. So does Applebee's broccoli. Don't talk about Applebee's. <laughs> There's nothing in that place that will not make me ill. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, someone owns Applebee's that's out there. But um, I would just say that if you're having problems after you eat at Applebee's, that's not a surprise. Yeah. So. Uh, we should also watch oh. out for citric acid. Seriously? Citric acid is made from black mold. Did oh, you know that? that's not good. Do you know that? No. It's not toxic because it's just the extract from it. But they use black mold, which is horribly poisonous, to make a food ingredient that's in most of your food. <laughs> but citric acid awesome. usually, it isn't always a problem, right? No, 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 no. It's, but it could know. be a problem. It's better than benzene or other bull crap that they put in. And pectin, which is not always a problem. Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. It shouldn't if it's be a real. problem. But I think it's like... They'll do things to these items, mm -hmm. but don't say they've done things to them. Mm -hmm. And then they just say pectin, yeah. innocent pectin, we think. Pectin's all be. cool, and then one day it gets out of the back of that white van in the woods, and it's different. And, of course, soy sauce, which you shouldn't be eating anyway because it's got gluten in it. So eat your tamari. Be careful. Oh, okay. So tell them the three options. For, or what, What's the... Okay, so if bring you, your own stuff. Bring your own stuff. you got to have your own little bag in your purse if you're a guy. I don't know what to tell you. But, um... Yeah, so instead of soy sauce, don't eat the soy sauce at the, at the restaurant. Um, if you do not have a problem with eating soy, what do they say? I think she said she's going to use it as a sleeping pill. Oh. Oh, well, yeah. Probably safer things out there. <laughs> um, I would try lavender and chamomile instead. But, um, so instead of soy sauce, if you don't have a problem with soy, you could use tamari. Gluten-free tamari. Gluten-free tamari. I think is tamari gluten is gluten-free right. because it's right. true soy sauce that's not been um, the soybeans mixed with uh, wheat before it's fermented. So tamari's mm, yeah. better. Or I really like um, coconut aminos. That's your favorite. I do. Well, that's they're your sweet. They're sweeter, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's good in moderation. Not is every it? day. And um, liquid aminos. Yeah. Rags liquid amino. But I wonder uh -oh. if they have uh -oh. they have a lot of that umami going on. Are you absolutely sure? Well, that it's okay? umami, uh, umami comes from soy also. I know. I just yeah. wonder how concentrated it is. I don't know. It's it, we don't know for sure that that's a problem. It only has one ingredient. Soy. Yeah, organic soy. It doesn't even say water, which I think they're lying. There has to be water in there. So, and they have little packets that you can take, which are are again aren't. You can find great, but what it's is that better. brand? What's that really good brand? Oh, oh sure. I don't remember. But anyway, you can find a little uh, plastic box that has probably twelve or I don't know, eighteen huh. little packets of mm. 
keep uh, them in your individual car. soy sauce or a yeah. tamari yeah. sauce. Um, it's the better, better brand that you'll find at the health food stores. Yeah, and Todd uh, Hawkins asked about. What, well, what restaurants are okay, but that's a whole different thing. Well, you just... the only one that I have not had, now I'm not saying that this is um, a really, really healthy place, but um, P.F. Chang's does have tamari. Uh, they have gluten-free sauces. They have gluten-free soy sauce, and they, you can, uh, they bring out your food if you order it gluten-free on a whole separate plate. Um, I am not absolutely 100% certain that you wouldn't find any MSG in their food, but I have never come home sleepy. Yeah. But, caveat to mm -hmm. that is, what? you have to be very wise because the food can be very, very, very sweet. And so, you need to order things so, yeah. that are sweet. And Oh Yao Chinese Restaurant doesn't use any MSG, but again... Which one? Oh Yao? It's Oh Yeah. It's oh, over yeah. on Rock Road. Oh Yeah! Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so as we as we run to an end here, but so next week what we're going to talk about is the second part of MSG, which we're going to talk heavily about the research and the physiology, and then the solutions. So don't eat MSG before you come to the next one, or your brain will not be able to comprehend. That's right. Yeah. So the research is insane. So when we talk about these studies, it is absolutely unethical, immoral, that we freaking feed people this, especially children. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. People are asking uh, for safe restaurants. Um, yeah. I would say that... Um, so we'll do that next week. Next week? Because we'll have a list. We'll, we'll come up with some like... So even if there's a, a We thing, can do better. We can do better. Honest. We'll try. Yeah. Because there's a... Uh, uh, even... I think it's uh, Dylan's has like how to... How to avoid MSG at Dylan's. Like, they actually mm -hmm. put that out because people were having so many problems. Uh, but we'll go through that with you guys, too. Um, so the last thing that we want to talk about is, you know, that all-in-your-head thing. Why? Mm -hmm. So the question people have all the time is like, well, I eat it and I'm fine and it's not real. Mm -hmm. Well, great. But what about the people that do have symptoms, right? So those symptoms are very, very real to those people. And the reality is... The difference between you and someone else is a whole bunch of complex physiology and genetic susceptibility that's exploited by these things. So, in hell, most of you guys probably have problems you just don't even know because there's not so, you know, overt. You well, know? or just think about, you know, some people are extremely allergic to cats, you know? Exactly. And it's not in their imagination that's right. other people can't imagine being allergic to a cat. Now, depression's all in your head, right? No. <laughs> no. Okay, so a couple things here. So on MSG sensitivity then. So again, some people can eat stuff and not have problems, but the we don't care about those people right now. We care about the people that have problems and want solutions. So uh, with your blood, bra your blood brain barrier typically has a low permeability to MSG. So that... MSG that's extracted goes right to your blood, goes to every organ in your body within 28 seconds. It hits your bloodstream in your brain, and it, not a lot of it goes over, right? But some people have an increased susceptibility, kind of like you're saying, leaky gut, leaky brain, and they have a, a, a higher affinity for what's called the glutamate transporter uptake. So those people are going to be uptaking faster. Those people are going to be more likely to be symptomatic and symptomatic very quickly, where someone else might just have weird off kind of symptoms for, you know, several days. So 10% of MSG can reach your spinal fluid in your brain and spinal cord and start disrupting your neurons. And it's about 30 minutes after you eat MSG, it literally causes brain swelling. Mm -hmm. So Sherry was talking about, you know, it's a cytotoxin, it's firing a whole bunch, but that uh, firing creates a bunch of inflammation and you literally your brain swells right now that should make a bigger brain so we say uh, studies show that Americans uh, by the time they become overweight have four percent smaller brains by the time they can become a, a obese uh, which is 50 percent of the population now for the first time in history uh, they have up to 10 percent smaller brains right mm -hmm. so 
what happens is it swells and then dies. So MSG, according to MIT, decreases brain neuron growth by 8,000%. 8,000%. Now, yellow food coloring is 3,000, blue is 5,000, but MSG is 8,000. literally dumbs down our children. It dumbs us yeah. down, and then we can't think straight, and our brain's all swollen, and our spinal cord, when it gets swollen, then you end up with neuropathies and all that other stuff that we talked about. But with that, so for 30 minutes, it only takes 30 minutes to cause brain swelling. That's about right. That's yeah. about right. And often that's that's your headache. That's that weird, funky it's me going feeling. To sleep. Yeah, your brain swelling. It's like, uh, shut off, right? It's kind of like the button on the baby, uh, that soft spot. So they, they yell a bunch. You just push that button real hard and they just reboot, right? <sighs> They can't take my kids away. They're all grown. <laughs> okay, so high consumption. So this is crazy too. So the question then becomes, what the how how much do we eat? What what the hell you know? What's the dose? Right? It's dose dependent. So high consumption MSG meals can be up to twenty three hundred milligrams a day. The average consumption should be from real food is 0.5 grams, 500 milligrams. So 500 milligrams is what you get eating real food. 2,300 milligrams is what you get from processed flavor enhanced foods. But one highly seasoned MSG restaurant meal can be up to 5,000. 5,000. Yep. That's insane. And yeah, you know, so you think about these college students that are eating ramen noodles three ramen times noodles. a day. That'd be your, that'd be your person. Ramen yeah. noodles three times a day. That would be, and so it's killing off their brain cells. They're having a harder time studying. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a thing. Yeah, it's crazy. And it's so weird now, because the all things... of those kids may not have super symptoms, but it's not doing them any good. Yeah. So a lethal dose, Ooh. lethal dose. So everything is LD50. So lethal dose for 50% of the testing population. It can be like a double dose or it can be a truckload and highly unlikely you'll ever die, right? So the lethal dose for MSG is 15 grams per kilogram body weight. So for the average person that would be 1125 grams uh, which is way more than you'd ever get. Right, those numbers we were talking about before, like the 5,000, it was milligrams. Milligrams, so yeah. this would be a thousand times more than... Yeah, so you're not going to kill kill anybody with MSG, but it's going to seriously mess you up. And the last little thing uh, that we'll cover is uh, a little... Uh, so we'll give you a little taste of next week. Of maybe like... I'm not going to tell you where to go yet, so you're probably going to get some MSG. So research says that you can take a specific vitamin that will actually make it better or make it less harmful. Does anybody know what vitamin that is? Vitamin Pepsi. No. Vitamin crack cocaine. That doesn't sound right. It's not L-glutamate. <laughs> it's not L-glutamate. You gotta take the L-glutamate. So anybody that takes L-glutamate would want to take Ooh, vitamin secret, vitamin secret C. All right. So vitamin C research shows it's effective in reducing MSG-induced neuron damage. That is news you can use. Don't laugh at me. What is that from? Is this an after-school special? It is. News you can use? I feel like that's an after-school special thing. So, how much MSG the average person consumes is like 0.5 uh, grams. So then how much MSG would you take before you go to a Chinese restaurant? I mean, how much vitamin, vitamin C, C would you take? Yeah, so how much vitamin C would the average person need to take before they go eat Chinese food and risk it? But then try to have less neuro, nerve damage because they're like, oh, I'm gonna have the, gotta have my Kung Pao, but I don't wanna have brain swelling or less brain swelling. I don't wanna have arrhythmia. So, how, so well, how much? 
2,000 milligrams. Two so there's pills. no way you can get that much. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. 2,000. That's two just pills. two pills. Yeah. So get yourself some Country Life uh, vitamin C with bioflavonoids like acerola and little, little chewables. And then you just pop a few. What? They, they degrade your teeth. Well, you can use chewables if you want. We live in the South. We don't need teeth. <laughs> yeah, but like... You don't need no teeth. Feed vitamin C to your kids, too. That's good. Yeah. It's <gasps> good for many things. Emily, Dr. Emily. What's Dr. Emily say? Feed your kids. Vi tell them if they're going to eat their ramen noodles and oh, yeah. disobey your well-educated philosophy and learning, learning, book learning, then they got to eat some vitamin C with it. Yep. That might be a good trade-off, yep. right? So, two two thousand milligrams of vitamin C uh, before you risk a meal. So that means until we tell you, because we kind of want you to suffer maybe a week, maybe a week <laughs> before the next show, uh, you know, and then uh, keep vitamin C in your purse, and then if you're like I don't know maybe pop a couple. Oh, but you know, there's a side effect of taking vitamin C. What? You don't get the flu. Damn it! Oh, which by the way, there's cor we. Oh, the first case of coronavirus. Coronavirus. In Seattle, so. Coronavirus. That is why, personally, I've always suspected coronavirus, so I always drink Heineken. Heineken virus does not cause problems. It just tastes great. But coronavirus, no. I think when you put the lime in the bottle, it aggravates the virus. Is that right? That's mm. not how that works. Mm. All right, you guys. So, thank you for watching the Dr. G Show. Thank you, Sherry, for being here, lending My us pleasure. your expertise. And thank you guys for being a part of this. And um, this is episode 162. And 163, we're going to talk about MSG solutions and how to live a life without brain swelling and death. <laughs> If you're interested. I don't know. So if you know someone that would benefit from hearing about MSG and the science behind it, yeah, tell them about us. And uh, if they can't catch us on Tuesday evening, we are on your Facebook, which Facebook is... Facebook Live, yeah. So, Emily, Dr. take your kids, tape their eyelids up like this, like uh, Clockwork Orange, and then make them watch our show. <laughs> Well, we don't know if they'll be convinced or not, but um, at least give them the vitamin C. They'll be like, we'll say all this stuff and they'll be like, okay, boomers. <laughs> <laughs> Which my daughter said the other Did I tell you she told me that? No. I was all complaining about self-checkout and she's like, okay, boomer. <laughs> and I was just like, damn it. <laughs> Getting too old. Okay. Thank you guys. Love you guys for being here. I appreciate everything. Uh, please post all your stuff. Share this video with other people. Hopefully it'll help them too. Um, but otherwise, we'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye, Bye. guys.